characters in the entire Bible, Samson. I'm telling you, this guy was a character. Um, he's an unusual, some kind of grace God gave this guy. And he's under law in the Old Testament, but old Samson sure had some grace of God on him. He, he didn't, never did say he repented or nothing. And he was just in one mess right after another. And so we're going to study his life a little bit tonight. He's already come through one mess there when his wife was given to his best friend one of his best man at his wedding and a bunch of junk like that. And uh, uh, now here we'll start in chapter 16, beginning with verse number 1. Everybody look at it, please. Chapter 16 and verse number 1. Follow along with me. Keep your Bibles in your lap. We're going to go back and forth with it tonight. Then Samson went to Gaza and saw there an harlot and went in unto her. All right. There's strike two. Uh, woman number two in Samson's life. He finally strikes out on down here. There's strike two. He first married that girl in chapter 15, and you know all that mess that happened, and all the, he, his father took her and gave her to his best friend, and he tried to get back together. I'll give him that. He tried. It didn't work out, and they burnt her and, and, his, her, and her father with fire, so that made him a widower. And... Uh, even though it was probably his fault, all of that. He was a widower. So now he sees this woman, and look what it said in verse 1. He saw, he saw. Now ain't that what got him in trouble the first time? For chapter four, look at chapter 14, verse 1. He saw a woman. He saw a woman. Look at your Bible, people. Can you not see tons of stuff? He saw a woman. He saw a woman. He saw a woman. And it's been that way all the way through history. He had trouble. He, before he checked out a girl's character, all he saw was what? Looks. That's all he based his whole relationship. Man, she's pretty and I got to have her. And how many men have made the biggest mistake of their life when God sent them a good girl right here and they look right past that good girl and see that wicked girl just because she's pretty and marry the pretty girl and... Ten years later, come to their senses when it's three kids and ten years too late. And that life is full of stories like that. Like, and, and vice versa, like girls too. Uh, if, if you're going just by looks in a relationship, you're going to regret it. Um, they say beauty's only skin deep, but ugly goes all the way to the bone. <laughs> a, and somehow or another we got this idea that if, if a girl's pretty, she's got to be wicked. And that's not always true, but it is most of the time. It is most of the time. Usually if you look wicked, you are wicked. Uh, if you look like Madonna, you'll probably wind up acting like her before it's over with. That's right, but not always. There is such a thing, even in the Bible, as a beautiful woman that is godly. Thank God for there's a few, amen? And I know all of you think that's you. And... Uh, I guess beauty is in the eye of the holder, amen? Uh, but uh, whatever, you, whatever floats your boat. Uh, but the uh, Bible said, a woman that feareth the Lord, she'll be praised. A woman that fears the Lord, who'll be, who'll be uh, praised. It's rare to find a godly, beautiful woman. And the reason that is because when a woman's pretty, people tell her all the time and it goes to her head. And she got to start thinking she's a little bit above everybody else. And then she gets wicked because men compliment her all the time and flirt with her all the time. And the next thing you know, it's hard for her to live right. And, 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 and men too. I mean, it works both ways, but more with women because men more fall in love with what they see than women do. Not completely. Men fall in love with what they see. Women fall in love with what they hear. You trace it all the way through the Bible. Trace it. Eve, you know what messed Eve up? Listen to that devil's voice. And some of you ladies have made big, big mistakes by listening to that devil's voice, ain't you? You sure have. He should have repented. He should have got it. He, he, he saw this woman was a harlot, man. She was a harlot. And he said, but good night. You see her eyelashes and her makeup? She smells so good. She is a harlot. And the Bible said Samson saw her. And he had been single for a while. And he went in unto her. Messed up. And, but I want you to notice something about this fella. Verse 2, and it was told the Gazites, saying, the people of Gaza, that, that Gaza strip you hear about all the time now, that Samson is coming hither. 
And they compassed him in and laid wait for him all the night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight with that harlot. He's over there laying around the harlot. And think about this. All these men come around and say, we got him now. We're going to kill him. So they surrounded all the gates of the city. Now, you got to remember, them gates of the city was the only way to get in them places. They had walls around them, big old, big old gates, big old gigantic. Some of them, some of them high as this ceiling here, some of them brass or iron made out of tuba eights and tuba twelves, thousands and thousands of pounds. And they all sit around there and said, as soon as it's daylight, son, Samson dead. He, he's out of here. He's dead meat. Samson got up midnight and, and said, I'll see you later. I don't want you no more, or whatever he told her, and looked up, and they all of a sudden looked there and said, uh, here he comes. Let's get him. So you know what he does? This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. This is the wildest scene here. Think about this, y'all. He don't just fight them like he did that other crowd. It said this. It said, verse 3, he lay till midnight and rose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them up on his shoulders and carried them up to the top of a hill that is before Hebron. You know how far that is? 20 miles. He didn't just say, come on, y'all, you think you can whip me? Come on, bam. They started trying to fight him. He just went, poom, like that, picked up the gate of the city, no telling how many thousand pounds, and carried it from here past Hickory. <laughs> That's a man there, brother. That's somebody you don't want to mess with. Why in the world did he do that? I mean, the, the dude drug that, drug that stuff from here to past the other side of Hickory. I mean, just, just why? I don't know. Just to show him he could. Just for pure spite. Isn't it amazing how God kept blessing him and putting his power on him and him just been with a harlot that night? It's a weird thing. But you know what Samson's a picture of? Samson is a picture of a Christian that keeps on playing around and keeps on playing around till one day he finally gets it. And let it be a lesson to you. I don't care how strong you are, how spiritual you are, how smart you are. You may think you got everything all lined up. You play around with sin It'll get you too. It'll get you. You flirt around. Uh, his, his story ain't over yet. He he grabs the gay. I mean, can you imagine? I can't. I don't know. I don't know if there's a man in the world could pick this pulpit up and carry it to Hickory. I doubt it. I doubt if there's a man in the world. Cause this thing's heavy. It's cherry wood. It's very very heavy. And, and I don't know if there's a man in the world could pick this up and carry it to Hickory. Anybody know somebody that could? I mean, that had to be supernatural. Yeah, just from here to the end of the church or something. They, 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 they get them big old things. Those weird looking dudes. I wouldn't want to look like that. They look like frogs. Somebody skint. And they, and they pick them. Like, oh, yeah, that's weird looking people. And they train and they train and they train to pick up a big old piece of wood or something. But they ain't going to carry that thing to Hickory. I don't care who you are. Old Samson, buddy, he picked like 10 of them and walked 20 miles, 20 miles. Just for spite, I don't know. Can you imagine big guy, long black curly hair, tough, he could get any woman he wanted, evidently. They all didn't like him. They was all jealous. He said, watch this. Boom, carries that off to Hickory. That's a bad dude, buddy. I'm telling you, that's supernatural. Huh? Yeah. Carried it off to Hebron down the road here at exit 125. That's <laughs> what it says in the Hebrew. Hebrew, Hickory. Uh, verse 4, here's woman number 3, strike 3, he's out. This is what gets him. The Bible said many strong men have been slain by her. Take a jawbone of an ass and kill a thousand people 
and his downfall was them women. It mess you up, guys. I mean, you can be the strongest man in the world. And she says, Ah, oh, Sammy, Sammy, wow, look at your big strong arm. I'm acting as feminine as I can, and you ought to thank God for it. There ain't no feminine bone in my body, and I worry about you if they are. I ain't got no feminine side like some of them perverts try to tell you. Sammy, is that a new tattoo on your shoulder? No, baby, that's where I went trick-or-tracking the other night. And I put that spider on her to give out tracks. Oh, really? And, and they had this conversation, a bunch of junk like that. And, uh, uh, and it said in verse number four, it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman. Here's another one. Woman number three, and she got him. In the valley of Sorek, his name was Delilah. Now, Delilah, that name has been passed on down through history as a picture of a, a temptress, a seduct, a, a, whatever they are, a siren, <laughs> a serene, uh, a, a temptress. Matter of fact, her name, the name Delilah means uh, delicate, soft, tempting, a temptress. And so he, he sees her and he said, man... She's prettier than that other one. She's prettier than that other one. She's the one I want. What's your name? Delilah. And he said, uh, boy, I sure would like for you to be my girlfriend. And she said, uh, sure. You're the strongest man in the world, I heard. And he said, that's right. And uh, so, I mean, she was blown away by that. Wow, strongest man in the world likes me. Who wouldn't like him? And so she, she, she they got hooked up here. And verse number five, the Lord's, usually five of them, you get that back in the Old Testament, of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, entice him. And we'll see where his great strength lieth and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him and we'll give thee every one of us 1,100 pieces of silver. So if there was five of them, that's 5,500 pieces of silver. That's like Jesus was betrayed for how many pieces of silver? Somebody tell me. 30. Samson... They come up to her and they said, now Delilah, she was a Philistine. I'm, I'm assuming that Delilah was one of them, one of the Philistines. That was his enemies. He should have known better. Fool around with them. Fool around. Listen, this is a story that tells y'all you fool around with the wrong people, you're going to get yourself in trouble. You fool around with the wrong. You say, well, but he sure is cute. Yeah, I've heard that before. And 10 years later and three kids and a broke nose, uh, you know, they're saying, I wish I'd have never laid eyes on him. I said, she sure is pretty. Yeah, and when you're out there hunting her at 3 o'clock in the morning and, and you don't know where she's at, she's pretty to somebody else. You've got to have more than pretty. Old, a friend of mine told me that one time, a long time ago. He was talking about dating some girl, and he said, pretty ain't enough. Pretty ain't enough. That's the truth. Pretty ain't enough. It's up there. But it ain't everything. <laughs> it ain't everything. I mean, nobody wants somebody ugly. But uh, have you ever noticed how two ugly people can like each other the same as two pretty? You can't, that's right. Everybody's on their own level of pretty. And, uh, uh, and, and the Lord the Lord can, you can, <laughs> you can think somebody's ugly at first and think they're pretty later, or vice versa. You really can. Because they grow on you. Uh, but, uh, uh, but I'm telling you, he, he should have, he should have never messed with her. Samson, do you know she's a Philistine? Oh, it don't matter. I had, I had one before and it didn't, didn't kill me. I'm tough. I'm Samson. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. The Lord said, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And he said, he, don't ever get to the place where you think you're tough. Sorry, don't ever get to the place where you think you can handle it. If you ever get to the place where you think, I'm mature and been saved long enough, I can handle a little sin, you're deceived. Nobody can handle a little sin. None of us. We're supposed to hate sin just as much tonight as we did the two weeks after we were saved. It's just as bad, it's just as evil, it's just as wicked as it's ever been. God never changed his mind about sin. God never changed his mind about the consequences of sin. God never changed his mind about the awfulness of sin. Sin put Jesus on the cross, and we're not supposed to play around with it. And Samson played around with it. 
So he said this. He said, uh, honey, you be my girlfriend. She said, sure. And when they found out they was dating, the Philistines come to her and said, hey, look, we got to get rid of this guy. He's killing all of us. Will you find out how come he's so strong? There's got to be, you can't walk away to Hickory with a, the gates on your back. You can't do that. He's getting it from somewhere. That's not from lifting weights and taking steroids and drinking muscle milk and all that kind of stuff. Try to look at it. He said, you're not, he said, he ain't fake. And he, that's, he getting that from somewhere else. That's supernatural. She said, all right. Now, the, you know what got him in trouble dating that woman, Delilah? Because when push comes to shove, she'll stick with her own, her own. She was one of them. And she wasn't going to betray. She, if she'd have been a good woman, she'd have said, oh, you leave him alone. I can't believe you're trying to destroy him. Uh, he's my future husband. No. She was gossiping about him behind his back, stabbing him in the back right there. And they said, 5,500 pieces of silver is yours. 5,500 pieces of silver. So after supper that evening, they was probably shacking up by now, her apartment or his, and she said, Honey, you know, we're, we're, we're close now. Can I ask you something? Sure. Sure. <laughs> Why are you so strong? He said, none of your business. She said, I thought you liked me. I do. Would you tell me how to, how come you're so strong? And then he starts messing around. Look here, verse number seven. And Samson said unto her, if they bind me with seven green withs, I mean, y'all know what a width is. That were never dried. Then shall I be weak and as another man. Um, green whiz, like a bowstring. Uh, it's a fresh cut that's never been cured out. Uh, he said, if you put seven of them around me, it'll take away my strength. So she said, won't you go and go to bed tonight? I'm going to stay up and work a little while, read this book. Uh, and he, so he laid down. And she, she turned on the OWN network, and, uh, and she was watching the OWN network, Oprah Winfrey uh, network, and it had all these lessons on there about how to ruin your man. And, and, she, and, she, and about that time, she said, he's asleep. So they come in, they took his cord like that right there, and they wrapped, wrapped one around him, two around him, three around him, four around him, five around him, six around him, seven around him. And then she got up and said, the Philistines be upon you, Samson. He went up and said, what? And all these Philistines come in, and he jumped up and just flexed. Went, Man, them things popped off like, a, like you put a, what does it say? Look here what it says in verse number eight. It said, then the Lord of the Philistines brought her up to her seven green withs. She bound him. And verse nine, they were lying in wait, and the Philistines be upon you. And he break the withs of a thread of tow is broken when it toucheth the fire. It was like silk, a fire going under a piece of silk, just no effort at all, just, boop, and they all popped off like that right there. And he said, uh, you guys want to talk or something? Get out of here. And suddenly they took off running down the road, and her lips stuck out about that far, and she said, Thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me lies, tell me lies. Tell me sweet little lies. Samson, I can't believe you did this. I pray thee, what caused you to be bound? And verse 11, you see, remember I told you all them plots? Every plot that Hollywood's ever come out with is right here in your King James Bible. They said a man studied it one time and he studied all the plots. Like every plot, every movie Hollywood ever make, every Lifetime movie, every movie on A&E, any movie at all has the handsome man, the pretty woman, or vice versa, the wicked man that... Uh, ruined the woman or the seductive woman who ruined the, the good man and stole him from his wife and all that stuff's in the Bible. They're, it's all it is, a copycat of the Word of God. This is the most exciting, true-to-life book in the world. But this book puts it in a co holy context. It don't glorify the sinner. And so she says, you mocked me. I can't believe you did that. And I don't know, you know, when I read this, when I've been studying this today, I thought, if you was Samson, wouldn't you think, hmm, man, I don't know if I can trust this woman or not. 
Wouldn't that be the natural thing? She must have really had him messed up. You know, man do some dumb things when he's got lust and after a woman, won't he? Amen? Won't a man do some crazy, dumb, stupid things when he's lust and after, he got lust in his heart? Here he bound him with them ropes, and she said, all right, now the flesh thing will be up on you. Pop! And all that. And if she started that stuff again, I said, ha, ha, ha. No, 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 no. I ain't telling you nothing. But he plays around with it. Play. I don't know what she did. She's played footsie. <laughs> Since we're in church here tonight, she's, she's played footsie. Marie, how come you're so strong? Why are you so strong? Get your foot off me, woman. She said, no, Samson, why are, you so, why are you so strong? And he said, i tell you what. Here's how come I'm so strong. He said, if they bind me with new ropes, verse 11, that, that nobody ain't never used, I'll be weak like another man. She said, really? He said, that's right. Are you telling me the truth this time? Yes, darling, of course I am. Reap what you sow. You're a crook, I'm a crook. That's what he's thinking. We're not married. We're shacking up. Why should I tell you the truth? All's fair and love and war and shacking up. And she said, she said, uh, uh, she said, <laughs> and it is, and it is. I've heard people say, well, I can't cheat on my boyfriend. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. If you're shacking up with somebody, you are already cheating. You're sinning against God. What are you worried about? Loyalty. Say amen right there. People get on a strong set of morals and they're living in sin. <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? That's crazy. Uh, uh, it's like these guys in prison, you know, they're in there for murder and rape and everything else. Said, I won't tell on nobody. I ain't going to rat you out. They got their morals. It's a sin not to rat somebody out. If you know somebody's selling drugs, it's a sin not to tell on them. Y'all sitting there saying, you know why you never hear that? You don't, you don't read your Bible. You watch TV too much. You want the drug dealer to sell your kids some drugs? Turn them in, bless God. Amen? Amen. All right, anyway. Um, uh, and it's not a rat. That's a good Christian move. Anyway, where'd I get to? About number 11. She said, I want some new ropes. So she took these brand new ropes. It'd be like a clothesline ropes. Like ropes, we tie a rope, and she wrapped them around him. They'd never been used. Went to Walmart, bought them, brand new, and uh, and they were liars in wait abiding in the chamber. And verse twelve said he'd break them off his arms like a thread. <whistles> now here we go again. The next night, and verse thirteen, Delilah said unto him, "Hitherto hast thou mocked me, and told me lies. Tell me, save me." Wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said, Look, if you, I tell you what, weave the seven locks of my hair. He had these big dreadlocks, they had big seven of them coming out like this. And he said, Leave the seven locks of my head with the web. Uh oh. He getting closer, ain't he? He getting closer to messing up. First it was the strings, then it was the ropes. He started messing with that hair. His hair really is where his strength come from. So he's getting closer and closer to telling her the truth. I'm telling you people, the lesson learned is you keep fooling around with the wrong kind of people and fooling around, you're going to get in trouble. They're going to get you in trouble. You can't fool around with the wrong kind of people and not wind up getting in trouble. It's impossible. He kept messing around and messing around, getting a little step closer, a little step closer, a little step closer. You know, when they get arrested, you get arrested. When they get thrown in jail, you get in trouble. So he said, he said now look, he said, you got to, Take these seven locks of my hair and, and put them, locks of my head with a web. And she fastened it with the pin, like, uh, not a bobby pin, a, a big pin. And, uh, and she said, Sammy, uh, please, please. And so the devil's pushing him. The devil's pushing him. Now, you know what wears Samson down? Time. We'll see it again in just a minute. And she fastened it with a pen, and Philistines be upon thee, Samson. She called him in again, and he waked out of his sleep and went away with the pen of the beam and with the web. That's three times he's, he's lied to her, and she's going, now that man ought to know better by now if she lied to him three times not to listen to her, right? 
He has nobody to blame but himself for this. He can't say, well, I got to... Listen, she done lied to you three times. She done told you lies three. She must have had some kind of power over that guy. Lord have mercy, she must have had her, her, what they call it, her claws in good on him, buddy. She had some kind of spell on him, and that happens. Uh, a man can put a spell on a woman or a woman on a man. Have you ever met somebody that loved the Lord and go to church real good, and all of a sudden they just go crazy and leave their husband and wife and go crazy? Go out there, they got some kind of, that ain't just, that ain't just interest, brother. There's something wicked about that. That's something spiritual, some kind of demonic power. So I don't know what it is. I mean, they can make you lose your mind. Make you do all kind of crazy things. And she, she said, uh, Sammy, here we go. Here we go. Look what he said. Look what she said. Verse 15. And she said, how canst thou say I love thee? How can you tell me that you love me? You don't love me. When thine heart is not with me, thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me where thy great strength lies. He could have said, well, how can you tell me you love me, lady, and you betrayed me three times? But he just, he liked that. She must have had something, man. Lord, she must have had the best smelling perfume, prettiest teeth and hair and everything else. That's good, that's good. I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to sort of get to that, but I'm glad you mentioned that, brother, because that's exactly right. The Bible said, men, because sentence is not executed uh, speedily on the sons of men, the heart of the sons of men is set on them to do evil. And there's something about human nature, if you get away with it, you want to do it again and again and again and again. And the more you get away with it, the more you think, I, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm smarter, I'm outsmarting everybody, nobody can catch me. You're fixing to get it. Flesh, there's flesh, one flesh. He which is joined to a harlot is one flesh. And there's something about when you join yourself to somebody, you tied up to them, buddy. You hear people say, well, this casual sex and all this stuff and everything. No, you're messing with something a lot more powerful than you think you are. You're messing around with stuff. It'll get you in a mess, buddy. It'll get you killed. It'll get you. It'll ruin your life. You'll make dumb decisions. You'll walk out and leave your own family. Women leave their own kids over stuff like this. Walk out and leave their own kids. That's without natural affection. I've known women that loved their kids and family and walked off and left them because of lust and this demonic. And men too, hardworking men that that love the Lord. Well, she said, "You don't love me." Now, isn't that the way? A lady does sometimes. You don't love me. You don't love me. You don't love me. If you loved me, you'd let me have my way. If you loved me, you'd buy me that car. If you loved me, <laughs> if you really loved me, you'd let me quit my job and go get another one. If you really loved me, you'd fix this house up. If you really loved me, that's sort of mean to to blackmail a man like that uh, if you really love me. Uh, I don't, I don't want you to raise your hand, but don't it get under your skin, men, when she says, if you really love, boy, you want to say, what are you talking about, lady? I work every day. I pay the bills. I'm, what are you talking about if I loved you? Lord, it's getting quiet in here. It's already quiet. Now it's dead. Uh, but, you know, you, you, it's, it's wrong to use that kind of, leverage on your husband. And it's wrong the other way around, too. We're, we just happen to be studying about a, a situation like this. And I'm talking about what the Bible says. Anyway, she said, you don't love me, Sammy. You don't love me. And I love you, but you don't love me. He said, yes, I do. Now, don't cry. You get a lot more crying than you do fussing. Ain't that right, man? They get a lot more crying than they do a fussing. The more they fuss, the more you don't want to do it. Ain't that right? Old stubborn man, he don't ever want to do it if you keep fussing at him. But when she starts crying, that lady said she kept trying to get her husband to fix this leak under the sink and kept getting, trying to get him to fix it. And she kept saying, why won't you fix it every day? She said, I ain't got time. When are you going to fix this? Dripping all over, rotting the floor. I ain't got time. So one day, she got on some, hit some of his old clothes and put on a pair of overalls 
and she rubbed a little catch upon her mouth right here. Looked like she's bleeding. And she waited right before he got home and opened all the cabinet doors and put all the tools around in there. And she's laying up in there, banging. Under, when he come in, he said, what are you doing? She said, I'm trying to fix this leak. And he said, get out of there, woman. Let me show you how to do that. And he went in there and fixed it. That's the way to get your husband right. You can manipulate him if you really want to use your head. You can get him to do anything, but not by fussing. You ain't going to get nowhere like that. He's harder than that right there. You just drive him harder. But uh, anyway, she says, Samson, you don't love me. You told me three times, uh, mocked me three times. And verse 16, here's what Brother Derek mentioned. And it came to pass. He went to work every day and had to work right across from her or go through her drive through at, at the restaurant or go uh, through her desk at the office and when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him, his soul was vexed unto death. She, me and you would say she drove him crazy. All on and on and on and on and on. You going to tell me? I thought you forgot about that. I mean, that, it might have been weeks, four or five weeks. Are you going to tell me? Finally, he lost his mind and said, Look, if you'll shut up, I will tell you how come I'm so strong. She said, All right. And somehow she knew he was telling the truth this time. And she said, All right, tell me. He said, Look, I'm a Nazarite. There's never been a razor come on my head. Hair about down to here. I don't know how old he was here at this time. But he said, If you cut my hair off, I'll be weak like any other man. And Somehow or another, she knew it. I don't know how she knew it, but it had the ring of truth to it, and he was giving God the glory. He said, I'll just be honest with you. God told me to do this, and he, he flat out, he, he opened up this time. And look here at what it said. Verse, he said, I'll be shaven, verse 17. My strength will go, and I'll be like any other man. And when she saw that he told her all his heart, she sent and called him again, saying, come up one more time, guys. This is it. We got him now. And the Lord said, uh, the Lord of the Philistines come and brought the money in their hand. So that night, she's saying, I don't want to watch on tonight. Would you like to watch football? I love to watch football with you. You're up to something, ain't you? Oh, no. I just, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. You, you're telling a lie. You're up to something. Oh, no. I'll, I'll do anything. I'll just sit at your feet while you watch football. And that fool believed that. And she she said, would you like for me to uh, comb your hair? And he took it. He got a haircut in Rome barbershop. Brother. <laughs> he laid his head down there and she started brushing that hair. And about that time, about the third quarter, it was so boring. He couldn't stay awake no more. And she... <laughs> Okay, let's go. Get in. And buddy, he should come in and she took a razor and started shaving that hair off. Man, he must have been out, buddy. She must have given him some given him some Nexium or whatever that stuff is. <laughs> whatever what are you doing? Sleeping medicine. I could not stay awake while somebody cut my hair. Uh and and he she whacked it off and said, Philistines be upon you. And he heard that and jumped up and said, Come on! That's it. He got to reach back to pop one like that right there and they grabbed him and he couldn't get loose. And the Bible said he wist not that the Lord departed from him. Now in the Old Testament, the Lord would come on you and depart. The Lord would come on you and depart. He don't do that in the New Testament. There was an anointing, stuff like that. But he said, let's read it and I'm going to stop. We'll get to, we're going to have to get the rest of this next time. Verse number 19 she made him sleep under her knees, upon her knees. She made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man and caused him, got her a barber in there and shaved off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, watch this, Christian, watch this. I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not the Lord was departed from him. He said, it's just like all the other times. 
just like all the other times, I'll whip him again. Guess what? It wasn't like all the other times. You know what we see here tonight, y'all? He pushed it one time too many. One time too many. You may think you get away with something over and over and you're smart and slick, but I'm telling you, you better hear me tonight. You can push it one time too many and lose everything you've got. And the Lord departed from Samson. And then that we'll, we'll talk about it next week. They done three things. First thing they done is punched his eyes out. They didn't kill him. They want to make a mockery out of him. And they blinded him. And then they took him and rubbed him up and bound him. And then they took him down there and put him like a cow or an ox. You know them things you've seen them in the movies where you had to push this thing around the mill all day long in a big circle grinding at the mill. Sin blinds, sin binds, and then sin grinds. Every preacher preaches on that. And that's what it'll do to you. Sin will bind you, sin will blind you, and then you'll be grinding at the mill. And we'll talk about that next week. All right, who's got a question or a comment? Can you see the life story of a, a picture of a saint who will not do right? And even though God blesses them and blesses them and blesses them, and bless, they keep on and on and on till they lose their power, lose their power. One of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life is a preacher that used to have the power of God on him that no longer has any power. That's sad. That's sad. Just quit on the shelf. God don't use them no more. Anybody? All right. Let's let's.